Within one month, I had $16,000. Like a year later, I had made a million dollars. And I only had three employees. Folks are not disciplined and too easily talked out of their purpose. Let the work talk. Okay, everybody yeah. do all that, posing and stunting on Instagram. <laughs> and this. Look, do the work. Yes. It'll talk for you. Come it will now. open the doors yeah, that it. no man can shut. But what is the mindset of the millionaire? Yeah, so that mindset, first of all, Welcome to Vault Empowers Talk. So we don't just scratch the surface. We dive deep into the lives of some of the world's most influential change makers. And today is no different. I'm your host, Brandi Harvey. But before I introduce my guest for the day, I need you to go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss your daily dose of inspiration, motivation, and faith. God, I'm so excited for this conversation. This is one in the making. My guest for today is Dr. Tracy Lind. She is the founder of Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry. In 2008, Tracy Lynn expanded the brand into a national direct sales company where she turned $200 into a $100 million enterprise. Tracy Lynn believes jewelry creates an opportunity for women to own their own businesses, balance their lives, and achieve financial independence doing something they love. Lynn is the author of two books, The Mind of a Millionaire and Wealth Without Sorrow, and holds two doctorate degrees in divinity and theology. Tracy Lynn has received numerous awards and accolades, including being recognized as one of the top 50 direct sales companies in the United States. Dr. Lynn's rise to fame is a living testimony in how much you can achieve with tenacity, confidence, and a whole lot of faith. Vault Empowers Talks welcome visionary, icon, and a real big dog to the <laughs> show, Tracy Lynn. How you doing? Oh my goodness, what an introduction. <laughs> I'm looking around. Let's see, who you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking to a big Woo, dog. Woof. <laughs> Absolutely. So good to be here with you, Brandy. This was definitely divine. Divine. Yeah. And in the making. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. This one's good. I know yeah. it. I feel it in my spirit. Absolutely. I am so excited. I got to say, I grew up, I, I was in college when I was introduced to Tracy Lynn Jewelry in the salon. Absolutely. I was introduced to Tracy Lynn Jewelry in the salon. Yes. When yes. I was in college. And yeah. here you are. Yeah. And here I am. This is not just business for mm -hmm. you. This is ministry. You yes. said this is business tree. Yes. What you do. Yes. It's business tree because there is a love for God, for the Lord in everything that I do. So I believe in walking in the divine call that's already on my life. I remember when I was ordained an evangelist and I said, I am no longer going to do any business. I'm just going to go out and preach the word. <laughs> and I had a smart pastor who said, no, no, you, you ain't called to the pulpit. You called to the business. So I, that's why I got the, frame, yeah. the, the word business tree from. Yeah. And then I would empower other women and then also just live the life that God would have me to live and be able to do things to help the women achieve their goals, put their children through school yeah. and do all of that all while I was serving the Lord in the capacity that he had for me. Yeah. I mean, take me back. 1989, mm. Philadelphia mm -hmm. and Tracy Lynn is starting in her apartment. Yes, yes. So back in that day, um, before there was a Tracy Lynn, because there's so many iterations yeah. of, of Tracy Lynn jewelry, and people yeah. don't like iterations. Yeah. You know, they want to just get to the thing, and if it doesn't work, then it, it they miss God. You didn't miss God. You've got to get yourself ready and prepared for the big thing. Mm -hmm. So there could be many iterations yeah. of one thing. Yeah. And every time you go higher and higher, there's more that you need to be able to sustain at that higher level. Yeah. And so back in 1989, when Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry was born, it was born because there was another business that had just failed. So I had another business, uh, Fantasy Wear, which was women's clothes. I don't even know why I called it that. Because <laughs> um, people think it's something about some I, fantasy. I, 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 I thought it was a little exotic no, wear. A no little. exotic, just clothes. <laughs> but my last name was Wear, was my maiden name. So I don't even know why. That's what you, it, it wasn't a God moment. But God <laughs> used it to really yeah. help me yeah. build. And and what happened was that the women, I started fixing up the house. I had it in the house. Oh, child. 
I heard this story. Yeah, so yeah. I start fixing up the house because I had the business in the house. And sometimes we get stuck in the house mm -hmm. and we don't know when it's time to leave. And I was stuck in the house. It was all good. Why did I need to leave? So I started fixing up the house, fixing up the kitchen, and they had to go through uh, all of all, all of this um, stuff. And I had plastic everywhere. It was like they were walking on the moon yeah. just to get in to get to the product. And they had a meeting on the porch. And they all said, all we're doing is helping her build her dream, fix her house. Let's stop doing it all at once. And they did. Wow. They stopped. These people left you hanging yep. because they sitting up here, we're not going to help her. That's what they said. Remodel her, her kitchen. That's her right. House. That's yeah. right. And they said the words that I've heard over the years, we're not going to make her rich. Mm. They said that before I had the answer to mm. that. And at that point, it really shut me down. So I went into a depression. Mm. Thank God for my faith. Because I didn't want to do anything with people anymore. I didn't even think I could do so business. So you packed up the business. Yes, after, I did. After this. I these did. women left you. Yep. Because they were helping you sell, push the product. Absolutely. And they folded. Yep. And so you decided, I'm going to close up shop. I did. Mm. And I closed up shop. But I couldn't get this inkling out of my spirit, a knowing, a tapping, that it was never supposed to be closed. Someone said to me, why don't you try jewelry? It's one size fit all. Yeah, yeah. So I said, you know what? Okay, this is months after. Yeah, yeah. So I decided to, to, to start. Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry in the house, but I had a goal. I was only going to be in the house for three months because I knew what happened the last time I was in the house. <laughs> and in that first week, I bought jewelry, $200, took it to the choir stand. The bucket came back, the Tupperware container with $200, all the jewelry was gone. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother sold clothes and jewelry back, at, back in the day. Yeah, you so, said, and her great, great uh, your great-grandmother was a bootlegger. She was. Yeah. She was. She was a bootlegger. Yeah. So, she, that, so they were always doing stuff. Yeah. So my grandmother... She called herself the entrepreneur. Yeah. And, uh, but I went with her. So I saw how to make things happen. Grandmother being a bootlegger, they always knew how to make something happen in terms of being a business woman. Yeah. So I went with my grandmother. So anyway, I decided to start selling the jewelry. And within one month, I had $16,000. Wow. One month. Yeah. And I was not even 25 at the time. This is pre-Instagram, pre-Facebook. None pre, of that. Pre, I got to post it. Nothing. Yeah. No post, no fa no Facebook, no Instagram. Yeah. Just straight hard work and rolling up that sleeve and some sweat equity. Yeah. That's all I had. Yeah. But I still had a love for the people and I knew how to set a goal. And I set that goal and I put it up on the mirror. So I had to see it every single day. By this date, you're going to do this. So in one month, I had 16000 So I was able to move out of the house, and Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry was born. But the thing was, I wouldn't tell people I was Tracy Lynn. Yeah. I wouldn't use the Lynn. I used my ex-husband's last name because I didn't want anybody to know that it was really me. Because they didn't believe it was me anyway. I couldn't be the Tracy Lynn, especially when it started gaining some momentum then. Your family didn't even believe that you were Tracy Lynn. No, they did not. Yeah. No, the family did not. They had a meeting. And they said, no, you, you're not it. And I didn't correct them. I, even, I was in the paper. I have an article where I'm denying that I am the Tracy Lynn. Wow. Because you didn't want to experience that type of pain or heartbreak that you, that you did before. Exactly. Because people came against you. Yes. Yeah. And I was a young woman. So here I am now, 25. And like a year later, I had made a million dollars selling fashion jewelry that I private labeled. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. So Tracy... You started in June, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And by the end of the year. By that next June. By I, that next year. I was 25 and I had made a million. You had made a million dollars yes. selling jewelry. Yes. Wow. Yep. I turned that June when I started, I turned 25 that October. And by that June, I had a million dollars. Wow. I had made a million dollars by that point. In jewelry, private labeling, I wasn't designing anything just getting some stuff, putting it on an all-black card. Then I got some cards made with my name, so I didn't even design it. Shopping in New York, bringing it back, living in Philly, so I was close to New York. And then I would take not even the Amtrak train. I was taking some other train, the slow train that took like five <laughs> hours to get to New York on a one-hour trip. I was on that train, wow. pulling the, uh, you know, the old lady cart. Yeah. So I did whatever was necessary to do it. But then it happened again. 
I heard the women outside. And these were older women because they had children in, I, I'm 25, they had children in a uh, young adults in college. And I had one specific woman who I was helping her with her child in college, just giving extra money, making sure she had extra jewelry. And she led a group of women against me. And I happened to hear it outside. So nobody told me. I happened to hear them outside and her saying the same thing. We over here making her rich. My child is in school. I need the money. I can sell jewelry too. We can all go up to New York and start selling our own jewelry. Wow. So the same thing. And that just hit me again. And I decided to close up yet again. So you've made a million dollars. Yep. You know that this business is working. Yep. It's thriving. Mm -hmm. But once again, you are like, they're attacking me. They're coming against me. Yep. I'm not supposed to do this. Yep. And so you fold it. I fold it. Wow. And during that, during that particular time when I fold it, I met my husband, who is my husband now of almost 30 years. So I met my husband, and then we just really started getting heavy into the word because I wasn't doing business. I didn't want to do business. I just wanted God's very best plan for my life. Yeah. And then in doing that, I met Les Brown. I started traveling, speaking with him. Then I started selling his product, and then, you know, they throwing money at him. And so I thought I was going to be the speaker. That was yeah. my, that was yeah. it. Okay, yeah. I'm going to be a professional speaker. I'm not doing any jewelry I'm not anymore. never going to do jewelry. Not touching jewelry. Not touching jewelry. I'm just going to speak. Wow. But God spoke, hmm. and he had another plan. He wanted me to get back to the original intent. Hmm. But now I had an answer hmm. for those who said, we're not going to make you rich. Well, if you didn't call me, you can't stop me. Hmm. If you didn't start it, Come you can't now. stop it. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I started to get my strength. I got my wings. I got my fight. I got that big dog going. Yeah. So you, I, I didn't see it. I've been to the circus. I've seen the clowns. So I know how they come. I know what they look like. I know what they sound like. So I had something in me. I was just like that bionic woman. We can rebuild her stronger, faster, more parts. <laughs> yeah. So I felt like I was reborn. Hmm. And this iteration was going to be the one. Wow. That I could sustain now. I can hear those same comments. I know what it's like to have the women come against me. I, I, I can handle it. And that's what happened. I started again. Now, I didn't say I started next year. To year. It was almost 10 years before I started again. Almost wow. 10 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Tracy Lynn Jewelry kicks back up. It has been dormant for 10 years. 10 years. You've been speaking. You've been doing things. You've been getting licensed and all kind of other certifications has been happening during this time. And one thing I knew, so I, I, I love to analyze myself. I can analyze myself. Yeah. I mean, I, that's the I, best person. That's the best person. Yeah. Right. So I looked, I said, okay, now I was missing a few things. I was missing the catalog. I was just missing some things and I was missing systems. I was missing processes. So I need to go and learn those things. So I bought a franchise. So hmm. I bought one franchise. Then I bought another franchise. And then the franchise gave me a franchise. Mm. So I own three franchises. So I learned systems, operations, and procedures. You went to buy a franchise to learn systems? Yes, I did. What, what franchise did you get into? I got uh, Rita's Italian Ice. It was big in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, Rita's yeah, is here Italian too. Ice, yeah. yeah. So before it even came this way. Yeah. So I got Rita's. So I was able to buy it. It was $295,000. Mm -hmm. And I only had $5,000. And I went to Rita's, and I told them I wanted to buy it. I went to all the classes, and they said, well, you got the money? I said, well, what, what, what kind of money are we talking about? <laughs> well, no, I don't have that. I never told them what I had. <laughs> but then a man was going out of business, and they didn't want him out of business, but they didn't want him as the operator. So they connected us, and his store was one of the top stores. Mm. He was willing, after many negotiations, to sell that. I heard God say this is what he wanted me to do. So I told him we're going to buy it. And we went, we were going to sign the papers, and he said, how much do you have? He said, this is going to be $75,000. you are going to wire me the cash? How are you going to get it to me? I said, well, what had happened? What I really got. <laughs> so what had happened was I took an account on the way here, and what I got is $2,500 today, <laughs> and I can get you $2,500 in about 30 days. And he said, y'all, you must be crazy. He stood up and walked out. My family was kicking me under the table. My mother and husband, they couldn't believe I said that. And I said that. He walked away. He called me two weeks later. I'll take the deal. 
Wow. Took that 2500 I went into the business and made the other 2500 from that $2,500 investment. And that store produced $325,000 a year well, in six months. It was a six-month operation because you closed for the winter. So I made $325,000. And I did that over and over. I had those franchises for 10 years. Wow. And then I heard God say, it's time to go back to Tracy Lynn. So I left it to the family. And I went back to Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry because I learned systems. I learned franchising. I understood the things that I was missing. That's the cost of tuition. Mm. You got to pay now or you mm. going to pay later. Because mm. I felt this was going to be my last chance. I didn't have another iteration hmm. to go through. Yeah. And I knew from the time I was a child that I was destined for something great and yeah. big. Yeah. And yeah. I had to be ready. Yeah. And yeah. I needed to understand systems, processes, operations. So I bought into it. And I bought into it three times. So I knew duplication. So that was the tuition I was willing to pay. Yeah. And put that sweat equity on it. And see, most people are afraid to do that. I know. That's where they lose because they're That's afraid right. to have that deep level of sacrifice. That's right. Yeah. Deep level. And I worked my store. Yeah. So I had the, the kids I was teaching. They're DMing me today. Oh, when I work for you, I learned. I made them come to leadership class. So I was teaching them like they were adults. And they, they are running businesses today yeah. based on what I taught them back there. But it was a sacrifice. I had to go to work every day with a red shirt, khaki pants. I made the ice. And these little uh, Bozo the Clown red shoes. <laughs> I made the ice every day. Yeah. I was willing to sacrifice because I needed to understand something. And I needed to understand how do you really do the books? Yeah. How do you really watch your money? Hmm. So I learned all of that. And the franchise called me in one time, talking about, you ain't doing your books right. I said, well, you, teach me. What, what am I supposed to be doing with the books? What? And they taught me. Hmm. They taught me. And so that's why they gave me a third store. That's why they approved my second store. So I started using their money to yeah. get the store. I mean, because I understood it and I was willing to sacrifice yeah. and put that effort in and not come in at first. I was going to come in and tell them because I had learned a few things. And then when they finally wanted to hear from me, well, tell us what you think we can do. I was like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm just going to go ahead and listen. <laughs> but because every I, I need to learn. Yeah. I love to be in a position to learn Yeah. and then act on. A lot of people don't act. So I can be consistent. I know how to execute and I understand consistency. And I'm willing to pay the tuition price yeah. for success. The tuition price for it, success. It is, a, it is a price. Life will pay you any price you ask, but at first it's going to test you to see how bad you want it. I have been tested two times, three times in another business. I was ready for this. Hmm. And then I bought my building. So not only did I own the franchise, I owned the land. I owned the building. So then when I sold the franchise, I didn't sell the building. I, I wanted to get the rent from the franchise. So hmm. I got the payments and I charged them rent for 12 months of the year. It doesn't matter. It operates six months. I, I'm charging for 12. That's, that's how it is. So I bought all my property. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I wasn't even 30 at this point. What? Yeah. Not when I was doing the franchises. Not yet. But I did franchises for a long time. So by the time I got back to Tracy Lynn, I was late 30s at this point. Okay. Yeah. I so you get 30s. back to mm -hmm. Tracy Lynn after the iterations yes. of public speaking, the franchises, because yep. you had gone to serve really with Les Brown. I did. And you I said did. you have to learn how to serve in order to be a great leader. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the thing I learned from Les Brown, like he would put me out in front and a lot of times I would run back. He would tell me, now I need you to go out there and speak for 15 minutes. I'd be on and off that stage in five minutes, running off. <laughs> and I had to learn to get comfortable in that. Because mm -hmm. again, at one point I didn't know, I thought I was going to be a speaker, but I need to understand speaking to inspire my sales force. I had a sales force of almost 100,000 women, a volunteer. So I had to be able to motivate the force. And so I learned that in the speaking piece. And, and so there with Les, I served him. Not only did I open for him, but I went back and I worked his table happily. Even with people throwing credit cards at my head, <laughs> I just picked them up and still calmed yeah. the audience down. Yeah. I never seen people ready to fight because they can't get a product. Hmm. So that's when I understood product. Yeah. And I started to really understand, how do you make people want to throw stuff at you mm. for your product? Mm. So everything was a lesson, and I was glad to get those lessons. Yeah. Whoo, baby, this, that yeah. mic's smoking over there, baby. Yeah, I know that, that, that mic is hot. So 
you are going through all these iterations. Yes. It takes you back to Tracy Lynn mm-hmm. in 2008 or 2006. What year was this? 2006, I started. 2008, I decided to go national because I wanted to build this thing because I wanted it to last. And I needed to do it grassroots. So at the time, I was living in Philadelphia, and I could drive to Maryland and New Jersey and Delaware. So if you didn't live in those states, you couldn't join the business. Mm. So I did that up until we got 2000. Why? Because I needed proof of concept. I wanted to see if my new methods that I had learned from franchises were working. Yeah, yeah. I needed to see if I had the strength to start and maintain. So I was testing the ground organically. Yeah. So I wanted to do organic growth. Then I read the book, The E-Meth by Mer- Michael Gerber, and it talked about having people do more than one thing. So I had, we started like making a million, making two million. So we were starting to get up there annually. And I only had three employees. Wow. I read that book. And then I worked in franchises. So I started to put all these systems, Mm. everything together. And once I got proof of concept that these women were ready to fight over this jewelry, Hmm. I knew I had something. Listen, people were throwing Tracy Lynn. See, back in the day, they had Mary Kay parties, right? Yes, yes. And you you said that you copied that version of Mary Kay by reading her book. I did. Because she had the idea of connecting with people yes, and creating a business that was people-centered and people-focused. Yes. And in the first time, one of the the first, second iterations, I was treating people according to their purchases. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, that's a word for somebody. Oh, come on now. That's a word for somebody. That's real. Yeah. So I treated you based on how you spent. Hmm. So you weren't spending good? Hey. Hey, you were spending girl. Ooh, girl, come on over here. Give me a hug. <laughs> Let me talk to you. And then I read that Mary Kay book. I got a real revelation mm. of winning friends, influencing. And this is still pre-social media. We yeah, didn't have none of that. Yeah. And I made God a promise that I was going to see people for the people. I was not going to look at numbers. Yeah. I just wanted to know the people. I wanted to help the people. I wanted to lead with that. If you can help enough other people, Ephesians 6, get what they want, you can't help but to be blessed. Yeah. And I wanted to go with that. So I stopped. I saw my numbers as a whole, but I stopped looking at the numbers of the people because I didn't want to treat them that way. And I realized I was doing it because somebody called me out. Mm. You know, because I don't have sales, you ain't got nothing to say to me. Eesh. I said, what you talking about? But you got a lot to say to her. She was right. Hmm. She was right. So in that next iteration, see, people quit on the first one that goes bad. You don't think you heard God. You heard him. Hmm. You just weren't completely ready for the big thing that was coming your way. Yeah. So you can't mess up no hundred million. You ain't got time <laughs> to get all your little iterations together. <laughs> you got to be ready yeah. at that point, at that iteration, to take that thing all the way to where it's going. Yeah. And so I started to love on the people, do something they hadn't had before, somebody hugging them. So they didn't know if that was real. Oh, it was real. And eventually people started performing because somebody believed in them. Somebody showed them love. Somebody would take them on vacations that they ain't never seen. So I'm spending my profits to now show you the better way. Yeah. And that caught on. On top of the fabulous story, but I was still private labeling. People don't believe anymore that you start where you are. Everybody want to get everything together. I got to get my trademark. (laughs) I got to get this. You know, I got my LLC. So now I got the (laughs) LLC. I got to get the trademark. I got to get this. I got to get all my connections. Listen, start where you are and the connections will come because we know we can trust you. God knows he can trust you to complete the journey. Then everything opens as you go. Yeah. Yeah, it opens as you go. As you go. God said, just start walking. I'm, I'm going to meet you on the run. I'm going to meet you. Yeah, I'm going to meet you on the run. Right. But you yeah. want to trademark, and then you trademark the wrong name. You didn't spend $525 trademarking. Now, you spent all your product money trademarking a name you ain't going to never use. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't it. Yeah. You got to go. And so I just went. I wasn't worried about those kind of things. I wasn't worried about all of that. I wasn't worried about the people that came to me and said, you know, I just saw that at down at uh, Miss Kim and them. I was down the street <laughs> getting my hair, and I saw this jewelry and this and that. I was like, I don't care what you saw. It. <laughs> this is what we're doing over here. See, I didn't. Let, I, I had gotten strong yeah. in that. 
Yeah. So it didn't matter where you saw. I was willing to start where I was. Yeah. I don't care who was selling it cheaper down the street. This is the price. This is what we're doing. I'm standing by this price until we move to the next level. Then I made a trip to China. That changed the whole game. It opened things up. I went over there. I didn't know who I was going to see. <laughs> and then I'm getting in strange cars. That's crazy. I don't, I don't advise nobody be doing that. So that's some crazy stuff. Factory sending cars to come and get me, and we getting in cars. Nobody speak Chinese. We didn't have Google Translate. We getting in the car, grinning at somebody taking us. You got to get out, walk through a station to go to the other side to get to the factory. But I did it. God yeah. was with me. Yeah. And I found it. And then once I got that proof of concept, I came back, then trademarked the name. Then trade, so I have 33 trademarks today. I got 30 patents granted. Wow. So I went, then I started designing, putting patents on it. Then start putting the trademarks on it. So I understand intellectual property. Then I understood the emotional intelligence needed to run that business. But I never lost sight of the people. Yeah. They were the force. They were the force. The force be with you. And the yes. thing that taught you the force was Madam C.J. Walker. <sighs> Madam C.J. Walker teach you, taught you. She did. She taught you how to create the force around you. She did. Because in 1918, this black woman, what people don't know, is really the first black woman to create a direct sales yep. business. She is. She was w w traveling with a lawyer, with an accountant, with a team of people. And you took that model. I took that model. And I read about her. And I, I found documentaries. I did all I could do to research. Then I met her granddaughter. Mm. Then I, I became friends with the granddaughter. I brought her in three, four times to speak to, to, to my company. So I brought her in all my big conventions. She was a guest. She was a speaker. She was a workshop leader. She was my retreat. Because I needed to learn. And then I needed the other stories yeah. that she didn't put in the book about Madam. Yeah. Because that's the only real model I had. Then Madam Walker built a mansion right next to the Rockefellers, and they thought she was the maid, and she didn't try to tell them otherwise. Hmm. That's why like, I, I don't have to be doing all that. Let the work talk. Yes. Let the work talk. Everybody yeah. would do all that, you know, all that posing and stunting on <laughs> Instagram. And this. Look, do the work. Yes. It'll talk for you. Come it will open the doors. Yeah. That's that it. no man can shut. Yeah. People will find you. Then you got people like Brandy, Brandy Harvey over there knowing who I am. I, I, I didn't call. I wasn't trying to, I, I didn't even know. Listen, and I, I was praying for you to sit in the See, seat. Come on here. I was praying for you to sit in the seat. And I'm honored to sit in the seat. Hmm. And if, if, if I could have made that connection, I would have. Because I have followed you since you were a little girl because of your father. Yeah. Always loved your dad. So I knew who twins were. That's why I call <laughs> sister twin. That's all I heard. So to be full circle yeah. in this moment yeah. without trying to push weight yeah. to get here, just push my weight doing the work, yeah. helping the people. Then I looked up and we were making $5 million. All I'm doing is having fun, loving some people, and doing what I do, jewelry. Grandmother did clothes. She had the eye of the tiger. Yeah. And then I got that eye. Still couldn't do it like Janie Mae, but she did it, and here I am doing it, doing it with the jewelry, and then getting that traction, yeah. then opening doors, yeah. and not even outside my driving zone on purpose yeah. because I wanted to know people. I wanted to know who you were. I wanted to know who the children were. I wanted to know. So when I talked to you, you knew it was real. Yeah. I'm looking right in your eyes. And all you could say is, she sees me. Yeah. She remembers because you're important. Yeah. So you see the people. Mm -hmm. You have the connection with the people. They start flooding in to now want to be Tracy Lynn consultants. Yes. You get up to 2,000 applications of yes. people. Yes. And that 2,000 of applicants turns into 100,000 thousand consultants selling Tracy land. Yes, ma'am. How? Focus on the things that I can control. I can control loving the people. I can control making the jewelry, designing the jewelry. I focused on the things that would make a difference, providing them with amazing jewelry. People love, uh, people represent our brand because they love our style. So I trademarked that. So trademarks come instead of me coming up with some you know, catchy phrase and yeah. that came out of it. People, people love our brand. People love our style. So that's how that came. And I, and I kept that. And then pass the mic, motivate, inspire, change lives. That was my mission in life before jewelry. Mm. That was just my personal mission. Yeah. And they took it in jewelry. 
And everybody, we're going to pass the mic. So they ran with that. So I focused on the things that I could control, which was making fabulous jewelry, designing great bags, and loving the people. Hmm. And, and, and showing them a better way. Yeah. You said this was really, the jewelry business was disguised. It was personal development wrapped up in it. Because it personally changed my life in the area of personal development mindset. And then we got into mindset shifts for the people. You know, I, I had one lady, she was 65. She wouldn't wear anything unless it was this tiny. Then she walked across the stage. By the time she was like 68, <laughs> walked across the stage, she had on this big thing, looked like Flavor Flav, <laughs> coming across that stage. That jewelry was that big. But she opened up, and I saw minds shifting. Mm. I saw things changing. Yeah. I saw a lifestyle changing in front of me because it was a personal development course wrapped up in disguise as selling fashion jewelry. Hmm. And I love that. Yeah. I love to see those minds expand and do great things. Yeah. It was a mindset shift. It was. It was a mindset shift for you yes. along the way. Yes. And then you taught the mindset. Yes. But what is the mindset? What's the millionaire mindset? Because mm. so many people are out here trying to get to the bag. They want to secure the bag. They want to be the bag. They want to get the bag. Have somebody else's bag. Right. Child. It's all about the bag. It's all about the bag. Mm hmm. But what is the mindset of the millionaire? What is that mindset? Yeah, so that mindset, first of all, is to be able to do something long enough, even though you are not even enjoying it necessarily, mm. beyond the fun of it, mm. beyond the thrill of it. Now we're into the purpose of the thing. Mm. So the purpose will drive you, not just the momentary accolades, not the momentary excitement of it. Yeah. So it goes beyond that. And then it's doing it consistently in season and out of season. Hmm. Can you be consistent? Yeah. And taking that little and keep turning it over, keep turning it over to something else and being disciplined. Folks are not disciplined and too easily talked out of their purpose. Yeah, yeah. And deciding Instead of discovering, you're going to decide because you see that's how they get the bag. So mm. you're going to go over and do what somebody else doing. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to start this now. I'm going to start that. Yeah. So you over in somebody else's lane yeah. where you have no anointing yeah. to yeah. be. There, there is nothing supernatural that comes on you to do that thing. Hmm. But you over there doing it because you see they got the bag. Hmm. And you see they got a car that you like. Yeah. Instead of discovering yeah. All the gifts and treasures that are already in you. Hmm. Discover, not decide. Ooh. You you decided, though, some stuff because, and discovered mm -hmm. along the way, because mm -hmm. I watched the interview of you that you did not too long ago, and you talk about how God will speak to you in the dreams, right? And then God will send you exactly what you're supposed to do. Yes. And you had a vision uh, for a book. That God gave you. <laughs> I did. I did. I had a vision of this particular book. And I told I had a publicist. And she said, no, do it on uh, manifestations or something that was hot at the time. I said, no, no, this is where something is going this way. I'm going to do it on that. And I got the vision. I knew the name of the book. I had the chapters of the book. And then I went to a service. And a prophet was there. And he came. I'm, I'm like in the middle in the middle, sitting in a middle seat somewhere. And he came over to me, woman of God. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. He said, God said you ought to write that book. Hmm. And then he said, I'm going to whisper the name. He whispered the name. Wow. He whispered the name, the mind of a millionaire. He whispered it. And then he said, and these are the chapters, woman of God. He I had the chapters, and he named some of the chapters. Hmm. I got up, and I tore that service off. <laughs> I got up, and them little ladies with the cloth was trying to chase me. I was rolling. I started kicking the drums up in there, kicking them. I mean, I just, I just set that thing. I was embarrassed how I carried on in that church. I'm glad it wasn't my church, but I, ca I carried on. And then when I got up, and everybody said, "Oh, that was a word. That was a word. It was a word." And I went back and did nothing. Hmm. Had the word because then fear deposits came in. 
the words of the negative. That's why you better watch who you surround yourself with. You better watch who you hang with and you better watch who you allow to speak into your life. Yeah. I had somebody tell me when I told them the name and, and they were in a ministerial capacity, well, how you gonna write a book called The Mind of a Mill? You ain't a millionaire. I said, well, I was, well, you was, but you ain't now. I was like, mm, okay, that got me. Mm. Then somebody else, I thought about my professor. Well, you know, you're not really good in uh, English. I'm going to write the book because we didn't have chat GPT. <laughs> so how you going to write the book without chatting? You know, so I, and then I'm not good in English. And then I couldn't. So I had all of these things. And guess what it did? Set me straight on down. Hmm. And six months after all of this, so I didn't get the advance. A man in the body of Christ wrote a book, hmm. The Mind of a Millionaire. And in it, he had at least seven or eight of my chapters wow. in that book. And then he got an advance because all of a sudden the game show comes out. Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to? all these things? So he rising up to the bestseller. And here I am about to go ahead and self-publish and have most of them in my garage <laughs> with no advance. And God had already given you. God had given it to you. Yep. But what is it when we get it? Because every last one of us who are sitting in this room, everybody who is watching, then got the download. Yep. The download to come. Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi on, mm -hmm. strong. All the mm -hmm. bars is popping that day. Yep, yep. All, you got the download, mm -hmm. and you do nothing with it. Yep, because you let you you start letting that enemy's voice, and you got fear deposits that people have deposited into you, and you let them things come up and talk to you, and they come up and talk you out. You don't need no other outside voices. You got enough that you let inside start talking you out. So you let all that come up and you sit back and do nothing. And then you say, well, you know what? It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah, that, that wasn't my time. It wasn't my time. <laughs> now, yet, that woman said, you know you ain't getting no, uh, I, we, we, once this thing was coming out, you were going to get a high six-figure advance. I had a friend who got the six-figure. I had her publicist. So I already knew. But she told me I was going to get a five-figure. Then at the end, she's like, no, we, we were, you were ahead of the curve. You had six figures. So I walked away with nothing but a garage full of them books. Because <laughs> the fear came in. The fear came in. And left its mark. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yes, it did. How did you get over that part? Because I think the hardest part is getting out of that part. Yes. It's getting out of your own way. Yes. That's the hardest part. It is. And how did you have to do that? I had to then look at my circle mm. and look at the people I, w I was talking to. And the people I was confiding in, it was totally the wrong circle. So when I got out there, circle, you ain't my friend no more. You ain't doing listen. Everybody with you ain't for you. Everybody with you can't go all the way with you. There are levels to this thing. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. came with you, started with you, may not go all the way with you. Yeah. There are seasons and levels. And when you are going to that next level, there is a falling away because you're like a rocket. And they were just boosters. Mm. And they will boost, boost, boost. And what happens when it's time to go to that outer space? The boosters fall off. Yeah. They come off that rocker. And we got to let folks know. We be going back trying to get the boosters. You going in the <laughs> outer space. And here you are trying to fall back to get the boosters. That's a word right That there. is a word. Yeah. And we keep people for comfort and convenience. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they're not the right ones, God is taking them away from you and you still trying to go backwards to get them. Yeah. I changed the circle. Yeah. And joined some associations. So I joined the National Association of um, Direct Sellers. So I got into the Direct Sellers Association. Then I, I just joined some things to just shift until I could find my own tribe. Yeah. And that's how I found it. I needed to find the people who could speak life into me. And I had to make a lot of uncomfortable changes to see the manifestation of where we were really going. Hmm. What was one of those really hard conversations that you had to have? Because you said you, you set your boundaries immediately. I do. You said you are you are you don't play around with your boundaries. I, I I don't. I don't play around with my boundaries. I don't play with folks. You know, <laughs> I don't play. So I set the boundaries, yeah. and I'm okay with. I've had enough of them. I've dealt with enough stuff to know that there are sometimes uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. So I'm one that will deal with it. I yeah. want to bring it. I can't fix what I can't confront. So mm -hmm. I need to be able yeah. to deal with that. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, and I had to put people even out of the business. 
Yeah. You, we don't see eye to eye. This is not what we're doing over here. Nope, this is illegal what you're doing. I'm not going to jeopardize my business because of you. So we need to part ways. Well, I ain't ready, but I am. Yeah. And it's okay. Well, you are, we were friends. No, we're not. <laughs> we were never friends. I never told you nothing. And people would always, so I had to have some of those uncomfortable conversations, but I had to be willing to do it. And that was another iteration, not just of the business, but there are iterations to you personally. Yeah. So yeah. that had to be there in order for me to help the masses of the women. I had to be that way. Yeah. What makes it so unbelievable to people about your success? Is that when they you come in the room, you're a black woman, you feel very <laughs> unassuming to people, they don't think that you have amassed the type of a success that you have. How hard has that been for you um, to kind of break that? You know, I don't try to break it. I'm I'm all right with that, because that's what they think. Yeah. And I know, see, I've learned, I've 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 seen enough to have enough confidence that I ain't got to explain it to you. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not trying to convince nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do what I do. Yeah. And then you're going to either see it and appreciate it or you're not. But I'm not going to try to convince you about it. You know, I've already had enough seasons in my life when I believed my own press and then I lost it all. Yeah. So I don't I don't I don't try to convince. And then it's my strong suit. And then when they find out my story or hear me speaking about my story, then it's like, oh, I didn't know. I, I know because you assumed. And yeah. then let's not even talk about the room with 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 the white men. Yeah. Have mercy. They yeah. talking all over my head. Yeah. Like I don't have anything to say. Yeah. But when I was in the direct selling association, I got a seat to come up closer to the table. But they had a vote. And I had to listen to the vote and be on the phone. And to hear the people who were smiling at me vote against me because they just said, well, she just can't. I don't think she can do it. But why can't she do it? Well, I don't know. I just don't think. Okay, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I still got voted in. Yeah. And I had to prove that wrong by just showing up and doing the work. Yeah. So that comes along with it. But even with bankers, I will leave a bank. I ain't trying to convince a bank. I had a bank tell me, well, you're making so much money that we need to see your business plan. I said, well, when did I ask you for a loan? Well, you didn't. In order to bank here at Small Bank Land USA, <laughs> you need to show us your business plan. We need to see your taxes. We, wow. we, Because we, the ladies here, other black women, they don't believe that this is your real success. They think something else is going on that you important from China. Wow. You know what, bank? Deuces. I had to leave. I was giving them my bill. I didn't ask them for no money. Wow. But when you don't know how it's supposed to go, yeah. that was a little, and that was a small bank for a small business I started. So if I had brought my real money over there, it's what I understood how to pick bankers, not just how to have a nice relationship with the yeah. drive through teller. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I understood yeah. banking. I learned it because I put myself in a room with billionaires. And so these are the conversations they having about their private banker, about all oh, one, one company has 700 patents. So these are the conversations. So I put myself in the room where they were having conversations that I had never heard. Hmm. You got out of your comfort zone. I did. Yeah, you had to shift your room. And I think most people are afraid to shift the room. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because a lot of times they the, they the biggest fish in that room. Yeah. So they want to be big yeah. dog. Yeah. You know, big fish in a little pond. Yeah. I don't mind being a little uh, a little fish in a huge pond. Yeah. Because I can grow, and I'll be that big fish eventually. But I'm all right being the little fish to take it all in, yeah. to learn. And people don't want to do that because they're the ones that people look up to in their circles or they're just fearful because they don't want to have the imposter syndrome. They don't really belong there when they do belong there. Yeah. So yeah. all of, yeah. you know, yeah. all those kind of things happen. You have, in going with that that big fish, because mm -hmm. I, 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 I got to get you to do the big dog because yeah. they yeah. don't even know how I introed you with this big dog. Some yeah. of them ain't going to know. Yeah. But there is a theory that you live by, the mm -hmm. law of the lid. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's where you got that big dog mentality from. Yes, Because yes. you understand that there is a law in the lid. What is that? Because the lid, when you have a lid over you or the lid is around you, the lid is over other people, that suggests that you can never go above that lid. And if that lid is there and you bumped your head on a few things, then you stop jumping and trying. 
and that was the grasshoppers in the jar. And every time they jumped real high and hit the lid, so the next time they jumped, they didn't jump that high. They didn't want to. They didn't want the pain anymore. Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is once they they took the lid off and say go free, they wouldn't go. Yeah. Because they never jumped high enough like they initially did because of the bumps. Yeah. And we stop jumping as high sometimes because of the bumps, not realizing that that is a part of the process. Yeah. Come on, microwave folks. You got to know <laughs> that there is something yeah. called process. Yeah. And you yeah. got to be willing to go through yeah. and grow through the process to get out the lid. Yeah. There is no lid, only the lid you put on yourself and then you make an excuse to live in that place when it's so much more for you yeah. out there. You a big dog, Tracy, man. That's a big dog. I'm sitting across from a big dog. Big Let dog. me tell you, when you saw when you said this on that stage, baby, yes. I saw that. I about jumped out. I sent that to every every group message that I had when I saw it that day. Go ahead and tell the people. Well, let me tell you this. And here it is. I had already made $100 million, sold my business. So I was able to, to exit my business at nine figures. Wonderful thing. Sold it, but I still own all my trademarks. I own all my patents. So now I can license companies because TJ Maxx was selling my stuff and I didn't give it to them. Hmm. And somebody else got knew a cousin in China and they got it illegally. So then I had to start getting trademarks in China. I had to have China attorneys. Wow. So after all of that, so I when when I sold, I didn't sell those rights. And I didn't sell the right to my name. And I was sitting with that because at a, at at a moment and so you this is a story I'm talking about like within the last year and a half. Mm. So this is after all these great things that have happened. I'm sitting in a place, I'm not on social media at this point. I mean, I just got back on social. I was off for two years. So I, I, I'm not native to it, but I got off of it. And here I am sitting alone with myself thinking, is it over for me now that I've sold this? I mean, what, what's, what do I do next? Wh who am I now if I'm not Tracy Lynn Jewelry? I, I'm Tracy Lynn. And I started to find myself dumbing down in environments, mm -hmm. just going there, not saying anything. I don't know what happened, mm -hmm. but my Coco, who was a puppy, loved the mirror. She's my big German shepherd. She's about 80 pounds now, my Coco. And when she was a puppy, loved looking at herself in the mirror, barking at herself in the mirror, licking the mirror. Mm -hmm. And years, she's about six, she's six now. So recently, I'm talking within the last year, Ear stuff, you gotta, gotta guard your mind. My son, playing with Coco, puts the mirror, a small mirror, in front of her face. And when she saw that big dog looking at her, she didn't know who it was. Hmm. She ran. Hmm. She ran away from the image that was staring at her in the mirror. Hmm. And when I saw that, it quickened in my spirit. And immediately, that was my word. I done forgot mm. who I am mm. over some moments of a situation. I've had situations. You know, I had, had audits from the IRS. I had a lot of situations. Mm. So I forgot who I was in the moment. Mm. And we get into a situation, a momentary setback, a devastation. We done forgot mm. who we are. Yeah. And here it is, my Coco, a big dog. She's a big dog. And when she barks, the house shakes. Mm. And we didn't forgot over a momentary thing, situation, setback, that we're a big dog. Mm. And I had all the women in there. I said, and, you, and I felt this. The Holy Spirit came on me. Big dogs. I started, woof, woof. And the women. Mm. It's a women's conference. They up, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> because, and it wasn't just about the bark, it was about the wolf. Yeah. It was about that thing in them that stopped trying, that stopped wolfing, that stopped believing the greatness that's in them. They forgot over the moment that they were a big dog. Hmm. Wolf. Come on, somebody drop the mic, baby. Big dog. Drop the mic. That's why, I, and I started a big dog academy. Yes, you did. Yes, I, was I did. Going you saw, next. You, you saw the segue. Come on now. Come on now. You saw me coming. I saw you coming because 
I have to now help. And I help. I have an icon circle for my six, seven figure women, eight figure. But there is a need, just like with my women that was in my community before. There is a need for women who got it in them, but they forgot over a momentary situation and never seen the six figures. Yeah. They need the midwife. Yeah. They need somebody who's done that thing, who understands it, who knows what it's like to even feel for a moment that you are not the one. You are the one. Mm. You got to step up and own it. So I have to speak to those big dogs and make them bark again. Ooh. Girl. Ooh. Mm. Heat. Mm. Fire. 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 And I'm going to tell you this. One of the things that I learned, and we don't do this as a, as a, as a people, black people, like we should, when God says move on, we got to be willing to move. There is something called the jump off in a business. Yeah. And when it's time to make that pivot, and when it's time to make that jump off, we got to be willing to do it. Yeah. We get so emotional, so attached. Yeah. And that was a part of what I was mourning in that season yeah. because I had to jump off. But it was only so that I could jump off. Now I could jump in and help them big dogs bark. Yeah. I am determined to see these women who got six figures, seven figures, eight figures, nine figures. They need a Madam Walker. Madam Walker was 100 years ago. It's Madam and me. So I'm going to be there. I want to now help the women birth that thing out, bark it out, get it out, because we've got to get them where they need to be. Yeah. And I am anointed and equipped yeah. to do it. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. This is, I mean, what's so divine about you is you have touched every facet of business, yes. every facet of a company everything you have touched it there is nothing yes. that somebody can bring to you that you have not felt it for yourself i think what is so beautiful about your story is that you do it with a, such a divine grace and mm. such an anointing there mm. is such a hand of god on you there yes. is so much fire and passion in you yes and that is what we need to see in yes. this day and time Yes. That's what we need and, to see. And the truth. You know yeah. that, Brandy. It's nothing like being yeah. authentic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you were raised around authenticness. Yeah. Yeah. And people love being real. And it has to come through because people know when it's fake. Yeah. You're from the Midwest, yeah. am I right? Yeah. You yeah. know game yeah. all day. Yeah. yeah. So I'm from Detroit. We know it. Yeah. yeah. So we got to come with that heart to really help. And to push. Now, I, I I operate a no excuse zone. You know. Yeah. It's no excuse. Yeah. And if I'm not right for you and you ain't right, it's all, it's all good. Because I need you to have that fire. Maybe you just forgot hmm. that you were that big dog. Yeah. But these women, these, we got some big dogs out there in the making. Yeah. I knew as that child. When that dentist told me in Detroit that he couldn't, I would never get braces. I was going to have to live with them crooked teeth. Hmm. I knew that man wasn't telling the truth. You know what I told that man? <laughs> oh, no, sir. Here, I'm 11. No, sir. I'm going to get me some braces. How are you going to tell me? I already knew what I was capable of hmm. even then. Yeah. Right voices, mother and grandmother, right voices in my ear. And so many people, unfortunately, had wrong voices growing up. So we got to get all that out. Yeah. And that's the thing that's hindering. That's what gets in the way. They still playing that broken yeah. record failure, that broken yeah. record voice yeah. in their heads. Yeah. Yeah. Tracy Lynn Ministries. Yeah. Where's Tracy Lynn Ministries in this season? Well, you know, Tracy Lynn Ministries used to have a program on the Word Network. On the Word Network. Every yeah. Sunday. And it, uh, I had a particular lady who was my sales lady, and she wanted me off the network because I didn't fit. I wasn't a, a, a pastor, yeah. and I, here I am doing jewelry, and I'm showing my jewelry <laughs> commercials because that's what was funding me. I was paying $15,000 a week to be on the Word. Wow. But she said, and I came on right after Bishop Jake, so everybody wanted my spot. So she, they led this thing. They wanted me off. So, but I wasn't going off until it was time for me to go off. So yeah. I was on there like seven years. Yeah, I was on there talking to people. Just be, I had to, I had to do what I'm still doing. Pour. I just yeah. had to pour. Yeah. I had to just get it out. I had to let it out. Yeah. And so eventually, I was like, I'm out. You got it. Do you know I got called back in two weeks because everybody that said they wanted it couldn't pay for they it. They couldn't. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh huh. So, but I didn't go back. 
So I use now the ministry and the business business tree combined. Yeah. So I, I'm in a ministry uh, ministerial program now at my church. So we're gonna see where where that goes because that's still yeah. there in me. I'm discovering so many other things that are inside of me that I didn't know about because I was so focused on doing the business yeah. and helping other people get there. Yeah, what are you discovering in this season? In this season, I'm discovering I'm a coach. Yeah. I didn't, I, you know, everybody, you know, I'm a coach, I'm a coach. So I, I don't <laughs> like that, I'm a coach. You know, I'm an internet sensation, you know. No experience, but I'm a coach you there. Yeah. So I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't like that word. Mm. I, you know, so I really say I'm a mentor. Yeah. Um, I like that word. But because I just didn't want to be the coach, I wanted to be more the mentor. So I'm discovering that. But I, I was doing that with the jewelry. Yeah, I had calls every week with my sales force. They were free calls they got on, and boy, I'd be so wild. I don't know, my, my wig would be half <laughs> off my head when I finished. I was so glad social media, nobody was posting that kind of stuff back there. Have mercy. But I would be, stuff would be all over. I would just be going. So, I, because I wasn't on the word, so I had to get it out somewhere. And then I started defining that teaching mm. more teaching with it and then then not only teaching but expanding that mind and 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 then it didn't go back and they started thinking more started asking more questions I did that for out of something that was bad about to happen I was losing a lot of consultants over a warehouse which I've had many of those situations uh, but I was losing so I got on the calls every week to make sure the people were were there and then I got them sticky that's how I did it yeah. that so I've been coaching and mentoring for 20 some years yeah. so I didn't know that's what it was so I'm discovering that part mm. uh, discovering social media in the yeah. last eight months so I haven't even been on for a year yet yeah so eight months really discovering you know I, I like to do my little reels yeah so discovering that they popping they popping you know <laughs> uh, my social media manager is here with me now so I just I just started discovering I could do a lot of other things. I discovered, you know, I'm good in real estate. Every house I ever had sold with all the furniture. So I got my real estate license. Mm. So now I'm a real estate investor. I thought, listen to this, I thought I was supposed to sit into the office, you know, go and, you know, sell houses and list them. Yeah. I, but I was down. If that's what God had for me, <laughs> yeah. I was down. I ain't get no clients. So I knew that ain't what he had. Right <laughs> so that told me I, went, I ain't make no money. I ain't get one client. So I knew that's, that wasn't it. But I still had my license and I knew I was yeah. investing. And and then I would say this to people. People say, see, that's what I'm talking about. I don't want to start nothing and got it. Step out and find out, please. Step out. So as I stepped out, I was finding out what the next phase was. But I wasn't afraid to step out. And I wasn't worried about nobody saying, ooh, you, just, you doing this now, child? Child, yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind. I got receipts to prove what I did, and I need to see what God is doing in this season. Yeah. So I'm going to be sitting right up in there at the agency, <laughs> answering the call, <laughs> desk duty, whatever it is, until I wasn't selling nothing for a year. I said, like, ah, I don't think that's it. <laughs> then I started these reels and started some uh, coaching and mentoring, and that was popping. I said, oh, I'm going back to the original intent of why I was created, mm. to motivate, inspire, yeah. and change, change lives. Yeah. It always brings you back full circle. Full circle. Yeah. Full circle. What are you committed to in this season? Or one word you're living by? Faith and consistency. Mm. Faith to keep trusting God. I believe God for big things. I believe God to 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 buy a house. I went to the closing table. They told me to come with eighteen thousand. I came with three thousand and some change, and I sat there. And when my husband saw the check, he was stepping on my foot. Cause he asked me if I had it and I told him I had it. I had what I had in my envelope. So I, I, I wasn't lying. He said, did I have it? I had the check. I had what I have in this envelope. So I, so I seen God and then guess what? It was 18,000 and then they did the numbers and it was less than 3000. So I got change. I was like, here's my thing and give me some change. And they were like, you came to the table with this. We told you, well, I know what God said. Go with what I got, get all the money that take that to the close. So I seen it. Yeah. I seen big things, yeah, yeah. so I have the faith to believe him for it. But I'm going to be consistent on some of the new things that are more uncomfortable. Mm. So it's not like I'm really super comfortable doing the coaching. And when I start, I'm good. But I, I, I needed my whole my marketing manager, my team to help me. Even how do you do this in this space? Yeah, I wasn't familiar. It was uncomfortable. But I'm committed, even to what's uncomfortable. I'm going to be consistent in that. 
until I master it. Yeah. Faith and consistency. That's it. Tracy Lynn, baby, yes. I just got to go. We going to have to put some water on that mic over there because, baby, that thing's so hot. Mm. That's the hottest it's been all day. And I am so grateful to sit across from you and share space with you. You are amazing. You Thank are you. a trailblazer. You are an icon. You are a history maker. Mm. You are black history. You are women's history. You are all things wonderful Amen. and good. I am so excited for what yeah. God has in store for this next iteration of Tracy Lynn. Continue to inspire and change people on this journey. You guys, that's another one for the books today. <laughs> that was a good one. one. Bought Empower Sauce. Woo. We don't just scratch the surface, baby. We diving deep over here. Mm. I'm your host, Brandy Harvey. Until next time, eat well, give a damn, move your body every day. Peace.